food and feces particles have been found on the walls of the wards. Now, what about that? It's very true. That's very true. It's uh, not too bad to find them on the walls as long as it hasn't been there for a day or a week or whatever. Uh, many of the residents are not toilet trained. Many of the residents do uh, uh, defecate in the middle of the floor and, or smear it on the walls. As, as sad as that may be, that happens. And uh, uh, the thing is, is that we, we can train these residents not to do this. They could be brought up to a functional level where they would be toilet trained. They could, they could perform uh, hygiene duties for themselves and could even dress themselves and things like that. That's the crime, not that the feces has been found, but that it doesn't need to be there in the first place. Mr. Knutson, cockroaches. It's been alleged that cockroaches have been a constant problem, and in the recent past, they've overrun some um, resident wards, resident buildings, to the extent where they've been found crawling over immobile residents. What about that? Uh, I can't answer again yes or no. I, I would say that given the set of circumstances out here, I, it wouldn't surprise me. Uh, there again, what do you mean overrun? I don't know about that. I, th I think if I could, I'm going to give a horrible answer to that question in the fact that uh, if a resident is sitting on the floor for 14 hours a day with nothing to do, uh, how terrible it is that he might welcome a cockroach walking across his leg as a diversity. and we're standing in the kitchen. Is this kitchen sanitary? Well, outwardly, I I can't say yes or no, but I don't know that I'd want to eat in here, Brad. Uh, I don't know if you would either. Uh, I look at the floor, for instance, now, uh, uh, a floor of concrete, uh, pockmarked as it is. Uh, it would seem to me that this is a, a very good haven for bacteria. Uh, anything that would want to grow, food spilled on the floor, whatever. Uh, much of the equipment, as you look around and you, you see much of it is very antiquated. A floor drain right in the middle of the floor. Um, the whole thing, I, the whole thing is a 50-year-old building that would need much, much renovation to bring it up to par of what you and I would consider to be even a minimum. Another thing I noticed when I walked in was the odor. With the food cooking, there's a... There's a just a terrible odor. Now, do you notice this? Well, I'll have to admit, Brad, I'm somewhat institutionalized, I guess. I don't notice as much as I did when I first came. But I remember when I first came, the odor in just about every building would knock me over. And uh, the odors in some of the buildings are worse than the others. This, ha this building happens to be fairly fortunate because the residents here function at a higher level. Most of them are toilet trained, whatnot. But when you get to some of the other buildings where the residents do function at a lower level and you have this constant smell of urine, feces and the strong pungent odor of the disinfectants they must use to try to take care of this, it's, it's, it's tremendous. Mr. Knutson, I understand the drain in this kitchen, and I wonder if this is true or not, backs up three or four times a year with sewage and, is that true? That's true. I don't know how many times a year. I'd say probably three or four times is probably a good conservative estimate. It, it does back up periodically and sewage all over the kitchen floor, out onto the dining room floor. It's, uh, it's one of those things. How do you tackle without this large mass of money that we need, this infusion of money that we need into this institution? Uh, you'd be interested to know, Brad, for instance, that in one building just like this, uh, a couple of years ago, they did spend uh, 125000 which was uh, spent mainly on plumbing and heating. Uh, considerations, and you walk into the building, and it's the same 50-year-old building that didn't do a thing for it. Uh, many of us feel, you know, what if they're going to have an institution, what they ought to do is plow it over and maybe start start over again. Uh, I don't think this is feasible. So what we've got to try to do is just work to try to make this the absolute best institution we can. Uh, how is the food brought in here? Yeah, the food is all prepared in the central kitchen, Brad, and it's brought into all the buildings in these containers, mm -hmm. if you will, in bulk. And then they are taken out of these containers and put in, in uh, on steam tables to keep hot, supposedly. And then at a later time, of course, they are served on plates to the residents. But all the food is prepared in a central area. 
when you take a building like this and you figure that, well, if we can house 48, 45 residents in a building like this comfortably, why couldn't we have stoves? And why couldn't they prepare their food here in these kitchens and have fresh served food? Uh, I'll expand on this a little bit because we did manage to start a summer camp this summer. Uh, many of the residents got a chance to go to a summer camp this summer for the first time. And I was amazed that the most often heard remark that I heard at the camp was how good the food is. Many of the residents had not tasted food that didn't come off a steam table before, and it was prepared fresh, and they thought that was great. They had much more food than they could ever eat, except they ate it. I understand that many employees, when they first come to work at the Belchertown State School, have become quite ill with colds, with chronic diarrhea, and the like. Is this true? It seems to be true. It seems to be a pattern. I did. When I first came for, uh, I would say for a two-month period, I, I seemed to have a, a constantly upset stomach, some diarrhea, and uh, uh, colds, easily susceptible to colds. There again, I don't know that this is, this is all that much different than any other institution. I think there's some bacteria that is floating around here that most of the residents have had it before, and it stays here, and a new person comes in and gets exposed, much like going to a foreign country, if you will, and, uh, and, and getting some of the, the diseases specific to a foreign country. How old is the Belchertown State School? They have brought charges against the Belchertown State School and against the state of Massachusetts on certain conditions here. For example, in the infirmary, it's been charged that this one elevator, on this elevator, clothes, dirty clothes are brought up in the elevator, food is brought up in the elevator. In fact, one of the employees over there told me that cakes come up uncovered. Is this true? That's very true, Brad. Rhonda, what do you have there? This here is ice cream. And underneath that? This must be the dessert, which could be anything from pudding or jello. The, the whole, all of this is Oh, food. no, no, this is all food, right. We have juice and milk and tea, and we have our diets behind. Now, this is the same elevator that's used for clean and dirty laundry. It is. The same elevator that's used to transport uh, residents. Right. Why are all these, why is the elevator used for so many different purposes? We have no other way of uh, transferring anything, our children downstairs, or no other way of delivering food. 